do is cover uh, a bullish and bearish setup, and we're going to discuss the rules that need to be met in order to take the trade. So what do you think? Should we just jump right into, uh, I see a bearish trade on my chart. <laughs> yeah, let's jump in. So this is last Friday. I'm going to zoom in. But first of all, I just want to say, let's cover the rules first. Okay. So for a bear setup, there are quite a few, I think I have six rules. Not all of them have to met, be met, but the more the better. I would say at least, I'm going to say at least four have to be met because the, the last one I just added is very critical, I would say. Okay. It's based around price action. So for a bear setup, we want to see market structures making lower lows, market structures making lower highs. And then also we want to see that price broke a strong support. We don't want to be shorting into support. We want to let the support break and then look for the trade to confirm. So this is a moving a exponential moving average strategy on the five minute chart. So the next rule is based around candlesticks and volume. So the candlesticks I usually look for are bearish engulfing or inverted hammer or shooting stars right at uh, on the retest of support. Or if there was a breakdown on, on that support, there should be typically a bearish engulfing type candle, which means that the current red five minute candle is engulfing the previous one, could be red or green, just engulfing the, the body. So this is a five minute moving exponential moving average strategy. For a bear setup, we wanna see market structure making lower lows lower high, and lower highs. And we wanna see price break below a strong support. Next, we wanna see that the exponential moving average, we use the nine, 13, and the 20. And sometimes we have the 50 on there too. You can see this on our screen. The yellow is the 50, the thicker line. And then if I zoom in just a little bit, you have the nine EMA is the light blue, and then light green is 13 EMA, and then the tannish colored is the 20 EMA. So you want to see a crossover, typically to the downside, on these EMAs for the bear setup. And then also you want for the candlesticks, you want to see a bearish engulfing or an inverted hammer or shooting star. Also, you want to see volume confirming once support breaks. Last, the last rule, there's six rules here that need to be neat in my checklist in order to take this bearish trade, and that is the short-term EMA is the 9, 13, and 20 are below the 50 EMA. Mm, okay. I have a bearish setup here. So typically when, I, when I'm looking at this strategy or any strategy in general, I want to identify strong supports and strong resistances, so I know uh, where price needs to break or above or below to take a trade accordingly. And you can see over here, we've got a strong, this is from, this is last Friday's price action right here. And so this is last Thursday. So you can see that we have a, an overnight, that was overnight action on Thursday leading into Friday. There was a rejection there. And then this is Friday's, price action, this is before, I believe there was some kind of economic event at 5.30. Right here, there's probably some unemployment numbers. And you can see that, uh, I'm just gonna draw a box here. There's resistance here, correct? You see that? Mm -hmm. So price is, if I zoom in and we also have support here, I'm gonna draw another box just cause it's easier around here, that's the overnight action leading into Friday. Actually should extend that, right? Just to be a little bit better, there we go. Okay, so if I zoom in here, this is the market open because I'm at Pacific Standard Time, 6.30. So the market opens here on this candle. Let's just say this is the opening low the first five minutes that's the open check it in just draw some uh, update these charts these lines so it's easier to see 
and that's let's just say that's the low. So you can see I also draw trend lines because you want to see the overall direction of which we're moving. So I'm going to have to adjust that one. Get a little up wedge there. So you have an idea of how the uh, the overall price action is around our support levels. So we have resistance up here, we have support down here, and we have the open. Um, we were bullish, obviously, making higher highs, higher lows, but we're approaching that resistance area. So there's a lot of back and forth leading up to this resistance, right? And you could obviously have taken a long trade but you'd have to take profit quick, but this is identifying a bearish setup once the sentiment turns, because you can see on this uh, this candle right here, we broke on heavy volume to the downside, and we broke our structure. You see how we formed a lower high here. We kind of already were looking at a short once that happened, because if we didn't clear this level, that 76.48 half, we were going to continue lower. At least that was the first sign of a uh, the bulls losing their steam. You see that, Kristen? Mm -hmm. And that was also the moving averages testing here. So once we broke that, we broke the, the open. We got to wait for the candles to close. Broke it on strong volume. Broke this trend line is no longer valid. And now at this point, we came down and tested this trend line which we had kind of a doji candle, kind of an indecision on decent volume, about the same volume on the downside candle. So let me zoom in just a little bit more. So right at this point, we are looking for a short because we broke the market structure, we broke this low. So now price has shifted from making higher lows, lower uh, higher highs to lower highs. If I can draw on my screen here, we made a lower high here from the one on the left. Then we made a lower low from this one. And now at this point, if we break, uh, if we break this low right here, it's really going to start confirming that okay, now we can use the EMA strategy to enter into a short position. And our stop loss should also be defined around that. So if I get rid of I'm going to keep these these trend lines here just so you can see uh, visualize the price action how it's becoming turning bear, bullish to bear so we can enter this trade. So first, let's look at our checklist. Is market structure making uh, lower lows and lower highs? Yes, it is. Yep. It, did price break below support? Yes. You got a support here and you got a support here. And right now, the market structure is, is we're, our price is breaking below, it broke below this one, and it broke below this one. Although the, it's oscillating around that level, it still broke below there. Is, did our 9 EMA cross below the 13 and 20? Eventually. Right Pretty here. quick. Yep. Did we have a bearish engulfing or some kind of big bearish candle or a inverted hammer or shooting star. So I see a bearish engulfing candle here on decent volume. See how it engulfed that doji candle? So it's just the body overtaking the body, not yeah. wick, wick to wick. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Wick to wick is more significant. In this case, this big candle here was more than enough to consider taking a short because look how much volume on and how big of a candle that was uh, broke through that support. But then you can start seeing, we start making lower lows, lower highs right down to this support. So at this point, I'm looking, we also had the EMAs below, crossing below the 50 EMA. So all our conditions are met at this point. Okay, so let me get rid of, clean up this chart a little bit. So at this point, we're looking to short a retest. And that will be against the 9, 13, and 20 EMA. And our stop is going to be above the 20 EMA. But we can also do this around looking at the price action. Over here, we have candles that we don't want the price to go break, break back above, right? That align with where the 20 is. 
I typically like to short between the 9 and the 13 EMA, but if we want to look at the candles here, the high of this doji candle is uh, 75.61.75, which would be a perfect entry for me. I'm going to have to clean this up just a little bit just to show the entries. So the entry would actually be on this candle, and we want to put a stop above that candle. So it's about a 10 point stop because of the volatility, you kind of have to reduce your position sizing or with the minis or use micros to be able to meet this criteria. So that's the entry. Let's do limit sell. This is probably a lot easier to do on TradingView. This toss is not as friendly as, uh, <laughs> as using the tools here. No, no, you're doing great. Well, you are using the five minute in this instance, so you probably would have quite a bit of time really waiting to look at this because five minutes feels like forever when it's. Yeah, you'd have you'd have about 10 minutes after you see this candle come in and then you see that moving averages come down then it gives you a better entry because you know you don't want to get back above this 75, 70 quarter. So I typically put a stop one point above there just to give it some wiggle room in case it wicks it by a tick or two. But this gives us a nice entry on the top of this doji so it's a nice look above aligning with the EMAs here. And then our first target is actually gonna be, let me just duplicate this. It's gonna be back down to the support. First target. So already that's like, what's the math on that? How many R's are we risk? We're risking one, let's just call this one R to make how much? Uh, 70 points. So, that's, so the, uh, it's a 10 point risk, about a 10 point risk. Yep. So it's about three R, little more than three R I would say. And then, we could take all of it off there if we only have one contract because we want to pay ourselves. But if we have multiple contracts, I would say the bottom of this candle is a nice target for a second target. You're already up like, I don't know, five R at that second target. But the whole plan is to just keep staying short as long as we keep rejecting at least the 20 EMA all the way down until we see some type of reversal candle pattern where we start making higher lows again where the sentiment switch is bullish and you can see here this actually once this price broke that strong support we have in the cloud here that offered a, a chance to add to your short position while still remaining profitable from the original entry so your average would probably be somewhere uh, still way above where i would want to put my stop which would be above this candle so you'd still make money even if you added to the position right here on that retest and then continue lower back to support and then still making lower lows, lower highs until we kind of had a hammer candle here where we reversed and started making higher lows again. So that is a bearish moving average, exponential moving average strategy set up. So Let me clean this that was 7.30 It's around the reversal time frame, 7.15, <clears throat> 7.30 so it would have been a good Pacific, hour. Pacific Standard Time. 45 minutes to an hour to hit some of those targets. Yeah, so you'd be, uh, you'd be in the trade for a little bit from here. So that's actually around 8 o'clock, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time where you'd get filled. First target took about 30 minutes. That's the European close. European close usually has a bounce against the trend, which is now down. So we bounced up and we continued the short lower. So you just be trailing your runner down for each lower high that we made. Keep trailing it down. You want to keep it above the 20 MA until we start making lower highs and then keep trailing it or above, I would say. So you can see how this trade works when all the criteria is met. Okay, for the bullish exponential <coughs> moving strategy, 
here are the, the six things that we want to look for, similar to the, it's com actually the complete opposite of the bearish strategy using the EMAs. So for bullish, we want to see the market structure making higher lows and higher highs. We want to see that price broke above a resistance where it previously rejected a few times. We want to see the 9 EMA, 13 EMA, and 20 EMA stacked up above each other. Ideally, we want to see a crossover to the upside. Also, the candlesticks we want to look for are bullish engulfing or hammers. And we also want to see the volume increasing to the upside every time we make a move. The last thing on my checklist here is the short-term EMAs are all above the 50 EMA. So here I have the NQ. Uh, this was last Monday of this week. So this is Sunday night's action on the Globex leading into the Monday cash close, or cash open, excuse me, which is right here. First, we want to identify strong support and resistance. So you can also consider this being uh, overnight high being a resistance to 78.70. So at this point, we really only need to have resistances drawn for, for looking for a bullish setup. So this is the cash open, uh, 6.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we can see that we have, let me zoom in just a little bit. You can see that we crossed over on the EMAs and broke above the first resistance, came back, tested it, and started testing the other two resistances. So at this point, it looks like uh, the bulls are in control. Let's look at our checklist. We do have some of these criteria being met. We do see that market structure is making higher lows and higher highs. We broke above this resistance right here. So here's a, the first low making a higher low right here and consolidating above that resistance. Now support. We, we do see that the nine, the EMAs, the 9, 13, and 20 are crossing above each other right here. And they're also above the 50 EMA. And let's look at some candlesticks. These are three big bullish candles in a row. And you can see that the volume's increasing to the upside. So that is telling us since we're breaking resistance here and now support, this should hold as support. So at this point, we can go ahead and start looking for a bullish trade, knowing that if we lose this 78, 25, 50, we're probably gonna lose that bullish sentiment. So at this point, this is a, uh, we're about 30 minutes into the market right here. We can start looking for pullback trades to the 9, 13, and 20 EMA. And here's your first trade. It's actually testing the 9 first. Didn't quite test it here around the 7 a.m. reversal time frame. It's either going to reverse or continue trend. In this case, it's continuing the trend. So you can see that the price action is strong to the bull side. So first, one of the first entries, this is probably the second time you can get in if you didn't get in here, is testing the 9 EMA here. So uh, what is the EMA there? So it's about 78.45, and then the, the 13 EMA is about 78.37. So you're about seven, eight points between all these EMAs. So those are your entries. Your stop is going to be below the low of this candle, which is 30 half. You don't want to lose that candle because the structure is still making higher lows, higher highs, and you want to just keep going along until that changes off each EMA test and put your stop below the previous swing low, which would be this one, which is 38.75. You see how we tested the EMAs here. The low of this candle was 39. That's another higher low. And we just continue riding that EMA, those EMAs all the way up until structure shifted here. That's pretty much where you get trailed out of your trade as you trail along the 20 EMA, just putting your stop below each new low. So to visualize this a little bit better, an ideal entry that I would have taken would have been
on the retest of these EMAs here. Probably would have just bought the 40 area. Let me buy, let's turn that guy green. And ideally my stop would have been below low of this guy, which was 30. Let me just get rid of this dude. Loss. Let's put it one point below the 30. It's 29. Give it some room. And then first target would have been back to the high here. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, clean up that one. That was a resistance. So you can already see this is about a three and a half four hour trade and that took you would have got filled here either here or here one of these candles probably would have taken profit here if we got filled on this just based on that candle taking some off there but let's say we bought this retest here we would have been in that trade for about 35 minutes 40 minutes to get filled there and then if we had some runners, we would just keep trailing, trailing below this candle, this candle, this candle. Just keep on going up until you get trailed out pretty much either here at the 17 or once you saw this bearish engulfing candle come in you would have just taken your profit because see how the volume increased to the to the downside there that's where you would have taken your profit because that was a reversal signal so would have caught a very big move on this trade and typically this ema strategy is how you can catch big moves just by trading the trend is what you should normally always do you don't want to fight the price action this is a really good approach to stay to keep your losses small and, and have your winners be at least four or five times bigger than your losers and it's a strategy that i use and i believe you're starting to use it as well kristen yeah i really like it i, I like that it's creating a lot more patience which as a day trader is some something sometimes we lack totally yeah so that pretty much wraps wraps up the strategy. Um, this, as always, you know, Kristen works every time. <laughs> oh, it works some of the times, every time. <laughs> so that's why you have to make sure you manage the risk. But typically with this volatility, I've seen the stops be about 10 points on the NQ. Okay. So that's awesome. like 200 bucks with the mini or 20 bucks with the micro, depending on how many contracts you have. So it's, it's not bad. Oh, and you can leave a runner. You can get paid, lock in some gains, and leave a runner and just manage your, manage your runner. Yeah, yeah, absolutely.